Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm excited to talk about a trending topic that for some reason is always talked about in my XC Facebook group, which is XC promoted listings and how to use them the correct way to go ahead and increase your XC sales. So if this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, consider subscribing. I upload weekly videos to help you build an impactful online business. So don't forget to go ahead and subscribe today. So let's go ahead and dive in into this tutorial. Make sure that you stay all the way through the end because I'm going to show you um, or I'm going to discuss with you guys different techniques of things that you should be applying in order to run a successful promoted listing and increase your XC sales for 2019. So let's go ahead and get started. So a lot of people, freelance clients, XC um, on my Facebook XC group, or just people in general that I come in contact with, always ask me, do XC promoted listings work? And my answer has always been, yes, they absolutely do when done correctly. Um, one of the major reasons why a lot of people or a lot of XC sellers struggle with their promoted listings is because they're choosing the incorrect tags. So therefore, they're showing their products and services to people who are not interested. So therefore, they're not making the money that they want to make when they're running a promoted listing. So I kind of wanted to discuss a little bit of all the different reasons why your promoted listing might not be working and what you need to do to fix that today. So let's go ahead and, and dive in into the tutorial. So tip number one is photos need work. So as you know, um, selling on an e-commerce platform like Etsy, or if you have your own blog, your own website, uh, maybe you sell on Amazon or eBay or any other platform like Shopify, photos have to be amazing. The customer can't, you know, touch the item, can't touch the texture, can't wear it or start or, you know, see how it looks on them. All they have to go by is your photo. So therefore, your photo has to be amazing. It has to convince two types of people. The person is actually looking for your product and somebody that maybe is looking for your product but not ready to purchase or they're just browsing. You want to make sure that both people, when they find your product and they see your photo, that they fall in love with your product, that they say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and buy right now. I don't think I'll find something better than this and they'll click and go ahead and complete the purchase. Photos are very, very important. I think is one of the things that you should invest, whether it's buying a light box or whether you pay somebody else to do your photography. In the long run, it's going to help you and it's going to be very beneficial. Um, keep in mind that in 2018, Exy did a survey to all their buyers and 90% of them said the reason why they purchased from Exy of purchase from that individual Etsy seller was due to the photo. It had nothing to do with prices. It had nothing to do with free shipping. It had nothing to do with review. It had nothing to do with um, the processing time. It had to do strictly with the photo. So that's a big percentage, 90% bought because of photos. And in the era that we live, it, it is like that. It is it's based on the photo. And it's really, really important that your product presentation, the way that you present whatever you're selling, really stands out amongst everyone else's, everyone else's your competition. Because when your listing is in the first page of, of the search results and people are browsing, how does your listing stand out? How does your listing look better next to your competitors? And you have to keep in mind when you are uploading a photo you have to make sure that the photo convey exactly what you're selling. You want to make sure that it has a, a nice background. You don't want no distraction. You don't want additional props that's going to confuse the buyer in knowing what exactly they're getting. You just want to have a professional, beautiful photo that illustrates exactly what you're selling. When the customer looks at it at first glance, they know what they're buying. If there's any type of confusion or there's too much distraction or too many props or it's blurry or, or there's a shadow, people are not going to click. So keep in mind, a bad photo will prevent the sale. It's that simple. Now, no one here is saying that you have to be a photographer because 
I know I'm not a photographer. So it does take practice. It does take um, doing, you know, 100 shots before you get the, the, you know, the last one correctly. And sometimes it does take a little bit of saying, you know what, I've done this enough. I can't figure it out. Let me hire someone or let me get professional help or let me buy a light box. And that's going to be a lot of e a, a lot simpler to take the photos. So sometimes it's, it is investing, whether it's on someone else or investing in, in another service like a light box that you could start taking more professional photos. So just keep that in mind. Um, don't be so harsh at what you can do because at the end of the day, your skill is making the products not SEO, not photos, not this or that. So therefore, sometimes it is okay to go ahead and get help. So photos need to be amazing in order to get the click-through rate going up. So keep that in mind. Number two is, or tip number two is picking the wrong tags. A lot of people use the wrong tags. So therefore, like I said in the beginning, they're showing their products and services to the incorrect people to people who are really not interested in what you're selling. So make sure that when you're choosing your tags, you want to make sure that you avoid generic keywords. Keywords are too competitive. Like I'll give you an idea. Home decor has over 7 million listings. You don't want a keyword that's that competitive because of many reasons. But the first one is your listing is going to be buried in the search results. And you want to focus on long tail keywords. So using long tail keywords, usually they contain three words. And they're better choices when it comes to targeting your niche dem demographics. Because when you use generic keywords, now you're targeting to the mass audience versus when you use um, keywords that are niche related or niche demographic, it's a smaller or, or usually less competition, but what you're getting in return is quality people. Quality people that are interested or quality leads, whatever you want to call it, that are interested in what you're selling. So it's better to show your products to, let's say, um, the search volume is 2,000 per month that potential people might see it. It's better to set show your products to 2,000 people that are interested in what you sell versus selling showing it to let's say 300,000 people, but none of those people are really interested in what you sell. So just keep that in mind. Um, making sure that you pick the right tags is really going to help you show your products in the first page of Etsy to the correct people that are looking for what you're selling. Um, a way to decide what keywords should I pick, um, I recommend using eRank.com. You could use Marmalade if you like as well. And E-Rank is basically, it's almost like Google Planner for Google is the same thing. It's E-Rank is for Etsy sellers. And they are able to put data from Etsy and kind of give you a measurement of keywords that you that you want to start using. And when you go to E-Rank.com, you could use their keyword tool. And that's a feature that they have that you could do keyword research. And when you're looking for a keyword, you want to make sure that it describes what you sell. So if I sell, let's say, running shoes on my store, I sell women's running shoes, I wouldn't just use the word running or, let's say, the word shoes. Let's say with that one better. The reason why is because if I, po if I pick the word shoes, most likely that word is going to be, one, too competitive, and two, most likely is going to be too, too broad. It's going to show up when people search for that keyword, it's going to show up all types of shoes. It might be sandals, it might be kids' shoes, men's shoes, boots, um, you know, high heels, etc. But what I want as an Etsy seller is sell my running shoes that are made for women. So I'm going to use a long tail keyword. I'm going to do research on women's running shoe. I am targeting people that are searching for what I sell versus me using running, right? That's too generic. And then I'm using shoes, which is too, probably too much competition and generic on top of that as well. Those type of keywords are not really going to help me. And the cost per click is going to be very, very high. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. So therefore, one, I'm not going to, you know, be found organically in the first page of Etsy. 
And on top of that, my products are going to be mixed with everything and anything. So a lot of people might find my product or see it if they find me because it might be buried in the search results. But then again, I'm not going to get the traction and the sales that I want because I'm not showing it to my ideal customer, which is a woman that runs. So you got to keep that in mind. When you're choosing keywords, you have to think about your customer. And my biggest recommendation is using long tail keywords that have a high search volume with low competition and high engagement. So when you use E-Rank and you're using the keyword tool, it's going to give you a list of keywords. And next to it, it's going to say um, whether the keyword is um, high in competition, I'm sorry, high in search volume, high in competition, and engagements. What you want to make sure that you do is that the search volume is at least a thousand per month or more, but the competition is less than the search volume. You don't want you don't want um, the competition to be higher because what that usually means is that a lot of people have that keyword and it's overwhelming the the search volume. So therefore you're going to be buried in the search results. It's too much competition. So you want to make sure that the search volume is higher than the competition. And you want to make sure that the engagement is from medium, high, or even very high. Those are really good indicators that people are actually clicking on these specific keywords that you're looking at. But you want to make sure that you don't pick keywords that are too low in search volume because it could have the same negative effect as a keyword that's too competitive. So if you use a keyword that's too low, you're not going to also not get the traffic. Now you you might rank first page for that keyword, but who cares if you're ranking first page if no one is searching for it. So keep that in mind. Another important thing is when you're doing keyword research, whether it's Marmalade or E-Rank, I have used both. Sometimes you'll get a box that says unknown, like the data says unknown, like I'll say search volume unknown. If it says unknown, do not use that keyword. What that normally means is that no one's really searching for that specific keyword. So XE is reporting back as unknown, meaning that they don't have enough information to give you on that keyword. That's usually an indicator that it's not a good keyword. So don't use those type of keywords. So the tip number two was make sure that you pick keywords that are not too generic, not too broad, that are more long tail keywords so you could target your niche demographics, and that are keywords that your potential buyers are searching for to find their the product or services that you sell. It's very, very crucial. If you use keywords that are, you know, not niche demographic and you're using keywords that are too broad. You're showing your products and services to the wrong people, to people who are not interested or they might click but not buy from you. And therefore, that's when you start saying, well, promoted listings don't work. That's the reason why you're saying that because you're using the wrong tags. Tip number three is listings not optimized. So whenever you do your keyword research and you have it up the part and you, you're using the right keywords, you have to make sure that you optimize your listings. This is something that majority of shops do not do. And optimizing your listings is for SEO best practice. And optimizing a listing meaning you have the main keyword in your title, you have the keywords in your listing description, and you're using all 13 tags. Keep in mind that you shouldn't put six tags or four or nine and stop at there. You should use all 13. The more tags you use, the more chances of being found in the search results. The reason why you want to optimize your listing for SEO is because when you optimize your listings, you will be you will place higher in the search results. Well, so when these people, when these potential buyers are searching for these particular tags, your listing will rank higher in the search results, giving you an SEO boost. It will help you with whether you do a paid listing or whether you do organic only. So it doesn't matter. It's actually a good thing that you know how to optimize your listings, regardless if you're running an XC listing or not, you need to do it. So make sure that you optimize your listings correctly. I'll say it again. You want to make sure your title has your main keyword. Your listing descriptions have 
all your tags, list it um, organically, make sure they're not keyword stuff and make sure that they make sense sentence, make, I'm sorry, make sure that they make sense in complete sentences and make sure that you use all 13 tags. Um, keep in mind that when you optimize your listing and you somebody types in that keyword, whether it's your main keyword in your title or not, because you optimize your listing the correct way, you will still place higher in the search results. And, the, and I wanted to give this tip as a pro tip. When you're choosing which keyword you want to use as the main keyword in your title and then also in the beginning of your listing description for your meta description, what you want to do is that you pick the keyword that has, out of all 13 tags, you want to pick the keyword that has the most search volume, least competition. And that's the one you want to go with, the strongest one. Everything else is just additional to bring your traffic. But if that's the strongest one, that's the one that you're going to put as your main keyword, as the focus of that listing. So just keep that in mind. The next tip is not understanding how promoted listings work. So a lot of people turn on the promoted listing, you know, they set the budget for a dollar, um, they do their little, you know, bids, cost per click, adjustments, and they just say, okay, here we go. Let's see if I make money. And it doesn't work that way. Um, you have to make sure that you start understanding um, how promoted listings work. You have to make sure that you understand that you only pay when somebody clicks on your ad um, and how much you're willing to, you know, how much are you willing to pay? How much do you want to pay for a cost per click? Do you want to set a bid amount? Do you not want to set a bid amount? Now, this is the tricky part about setting a bid amount. If you using the wrong keywords, and you're using a keyword like home decor, let's say. And I don't know how much the cost per click for home decor is, but let's say is, is I don't know, 55 cents per click to get rank for that keyword in the first page of Etsy. And you say, I'm, I'm going to use home, you know, you pick home decor as your tag. So already you have a keyword that's too competitive. So it's not a great keyword. And the cost per click is higher on competitive keywords. So that's important to know. So that keyword is 55 cents per click. So now you set or you adjust, right, your bid amount because you could do that. You could change your bid amount and you could say, I'm going to spend a dollar a day and every click is going to be 10 cents per click. I don't want to spend more than 10 cents. That way my dollar could go a long way for the day. Well, I'm going to do five dollars a day, but I want to set it up to 15 cents per click or 25 cents, whatever you want because you actually have the control to do that. But the issue is when you do it on a listing that the cost per click, the regular cost per click is 55 cents and you change it to 10 cents, guess what's gonna happen? When you run that promoted listing, XE is gonna prioritize people that are paying more. So the people that are willing to pay the 55 cents per click for home decor, are gonna appear in the first page of Etsy. But people that decided I wanna pay only 10 cents per click or 15 cents per click, they're gonna be buried in the search results. They're gonna, they're not gonna show up. They're gonna be considered a low cost per click. They're not gonna be in the first or second page. You might be in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So no one's really seeing you because a lot of shoppers, unless they're looking for something very, very specific, they're not willing to go after the third page of XE search results. They're not going to keep browsing to page 10, 11, 12, 15, 35. So therefore, your listing never gets the visibility that you want. But that's because you're, you're picking, like I said, the wrong keywords. You're picking keywords that the cost per click is very high. Now you're lowering your bid to only 10 cents or 15 cents. So therefore, it's almost essentially like you're not running an ad, basically. You're getting... You're not getting the traction of what happens when your listing appears on the first page of XE versus your listing appearing on the eighth page of XE. So keep that in mind. This is why I kind of wanted to break it down because everything works with everything, right? Everything works with everything. You could have the perfect, you know, cost per click and the perfect tags, but if your photos look like Jack, you know, they don't look great, no one's going to click. You could have the best photo. You could have the best listing description, but use the wrong tags and no one's finding you or you're showing your products to people that don't care. So everything 
kind of ties in. So you have to keep that in mind. But understanding how promoted listings work and understanding um, the, the strategy behind them um, is really important. Now, if you have a listing, if you have a keyword that the cost per click regular, I don't know, is 15 cents and you have 10 cents per click, that's okay because it's very similar to the, the cost per click and you might still be pushed to the first page. But if you're paying 10 cents, but the difference is like 55 cents, that's when you'll be in the search. You'll get buried in the search results and you might be on the six or seven or, you know, so on. You wouldn't be necessarily on the first page of XE search results, which is ultimately what you want to make sure that you are. So what you want to do is make sure that you use keywords that you could be found organically on the first page of XE. But also when you are running a promoted listing, you're not going to pay so much for them. And you could spend $10 a day and manage how much you want to spend and still be seen in the first or second page of XE. So keeping in mind, learning how promoted listing works are very important. The next one is a lot of XE sellers don't have in place a promoted listing strategy. So this kind of goes in hand in hand what we just talked about. And having a promoted listing strategy is really important. Um, I know for me, what I normally do is promote the top listings that I normally sell. So there are months that if it's my peak season for that particular, like for weddings as my peak season, what I would do is promote all the wedding stuff. I will hype it up more. I will put more money behind that. And the stuff that's more like Christmas or um, Valentine's or, or or the other events that are not around the wedding season, I won't spend money on those on those listings because I already know that people are not necessarily looking for those listings. So what I do is I base it on what month and what I'm selling. So if it's Valentine's month um, or if it's wedding season month, then I'll go ahead and hype the hype or not hype, but start using my promoted listings on those particular items. And that actually helps me increase, like triple my sales, basically. I used to do the mistake of running the same ad, like the same, I used to make the mistake of running my ads on all my listings year round. I never did the adjustments. And what I learned quickly was I would still make money because with promoted listings, if you pick the right tags, you're always going to have, you're always going to have an upside, which I have, or I've been very lucky because I do choose the right photos and the right listing tags. But what I noticed was that as soon as I did that switch and I started strategizing how I'm going to promote my listing. So I started saying, okay, December, I'm going to do any, I do like event planning. So I will do all my signs and stuff that is for like related for Christmas. And then what I would do instead of using my $30 per day in the everything in my store, I would just focus on those on those particular listings. And what I noticed was one month I went from making like 2800 to the following month when I did that change to like 4600 After that, I made like 6000 So that showed me like, whoa, the strategy really works. So keep that in mind is having a strategy and then looking at what's working and what's not working. If you are choosing the right tags and you have decent photos or like really, really good photos, but you're still not getting the traction on the specific listing that you have, it could be that maybe no one's really interested in that product. I know I had to remove a couple of listings that I did with particular flowers that I chose because even though I thought it was pretty, not, not everybody thought it was pretty because I wasn't getting any traction from it. So you have to make sure that you are critical to your own work and not take it personal. Just be like, okay, what's working? What's not working? What are my top listings? What are not my top listings? What can I do for the listings that are getting no traction? But the first thing that you have to do is make sure that you have a plan in place. Make sure that you alternate between months, depending on the promotion, depending on what you sell. Um, so if you sell stuff for wedding season on wedding season, make sure that you only promote your wedding stuff. Even if you have other stuff that you have in your store, like I do. If you do Christmas stuff, make sure that on Christmas you promote those items. But having that strategy and also deciding, okay, these are my top sellers 
So these I'm okay paying 55 cents per click. For these I sell kind of, you know, not too many. And the profit that I will make after I pay regular cost per bid is not that much. So let me just go ahead and adjust, adjust the bid for these here. So just understanding that you don't have to run the same amount for all your listings. You could say you could control and you could set a custom bid amount for any of your products. So you could have one that, you know, your highest cost per click you, you are willing to pay is 70 cents because that's your top contender. And if somebody buys from you, you make $100, so it's worth it. But this one, you only sell for $5.99, so you don't want your cost per bid to be a dollar. You want it to be 15 cents. So just keep that in mind. You could set it based on your product, how much you sell it, if it's popular or not, what season we're in, what if it's trending, etc. But having a listing strategy, coming up with a journal and writing down everything and um, will help you a lot. Another one is not looking at your data. A lot of Etsy sellers don't analyze their data. So they really don't know what's working and what's not working. They make a lot of complaints like, oh, promoter listings don't work. But when you ask them, right, when you say, okay, what exactly didn't work, they don't know how to answer that. And that's because they never look at their data. Um, if you look at your data, you'll be able to say, okay, I had this listing and I did this, this, and this, and it didn't work. It got me 300 clicks and only three people bought. And then I'll be able to kind of like look into it and give you more details. But a lot of people, when you ask them, they have no idea. That's because they never look at or never review their data. So in order for you to grow your business, in order for you to grow your promoted listings and make more money, take, let's say, 800 and make it into 5,000 in sales. The way that you do that is analyzing your data month after month refining it until you find, until you learn. Um, nothing substitute experience. That's one thing that a lot of people don't grasp or they don't really understand. So nothing substitute experience. You have to go through it, good and bad, whether you make sales or not, and re refine it again and look at your analytics and look at your data, see what's working, what's not working, to have that aha moment when you say, oh, I get it now, I understand what she's talking about, cost per click, the bid amount, how to change this, how to change that, how I could do certain prices for these, certain prices for that. But you have to start learning um, how to analyze your data. And it, it's simple as every month looking back. Etsy also sends you a report every month of how your listings did. It will tell you you got this many impressions, you um you pay promoted listing, let's say you pay 800 and you make 3000 It tells you all the data right there. It's, that's enough data to kind of get started. And then just deep diving and seeing what's working, what's not working. Um, doing an audit on your listings, especially the ones that are the most popular ones. Those are the ones you want to start with. You want to focus on the ones that are making you money, fixing those, adjusting those, and then worry about your other listings, right? You never want to start with your worst listing. You want to start with the best listing. How can you make that one even better and then improve on the other ones? But make sure that you start analyzing your data month after month. It shouldn't be five months in and you haven't looked at your data. You have to analyze it every month. And another thing is do not do a listing, a promoted listing for three days and stop it and say, I didn't make any money. You have to let it run the full course of 30 days. You have to let, the only way you're going to learn if you did something good or not, or if you need to improve, is letting the data, if you run it the whole 30 days, you'll get enough data back to see what's happening. How are people interacting with your listings? Are people finding them? Are people clicking on them? Which listings are getting found? Which listings are not getting found? But in order to know that, you have to collect enough data. Three days of data is not enough. Two weeks of data is not enough. One week of data is not enough. I recommend at least 30 days to 90 days, to be quite honest, because it's going to take some time to adjust and learn how promoted listings work. This is not something that is going to come natural to you unless you work for Google, you know, you did, um, you know, you did some type of CPC before, um, but if you've never done PPC as a job or you don't understand it, it does take quite a bit to understand. It doesn't mean that it will take you forever. It just means that it will take you 
to learning with experience as well. So just keep that in mind. If you do all these steps that I just talked about, you could definitely have a successful XE promoted listings month after month. And you could go from, you know, having a steady income to tripling your income when done correctly. So make sure that you follow these steps. I have also linked these two videos here that are going to be very, very helpful when it comes to keyword research that I think is going to help you. So make sure you watch them. And don't forget to leave a comment below and tell me how you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like. Thank you.